Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. Uh, we're carrying on our examination of envelopes and today we're talking about the filter envelope page. And I thought we'd have a little bit of uh, fun with this one rather than just me like showing you the vanilla filter settings. I'll actually play with the loop and do some like semi-realistic uh, filter work on it. So I've chosen this loop here. I only actually want the first half of it. The first thing that I'm going to do is pick it up out of Media Bay, drop it onto a pad. Okay, so we've got the sample on the pad and I've just equalized the volume so it's not too offensive. I only actually want the first half of the sample. I don't want the, the second uh, loop section where it changes pitch. So the easiest way for me to do that is to pick up the sample end, get that somewhere in the ballpark, and then zoom in. And you see when I started to zoom in, I selected the play line. Wherever you've got your play line currently set to, that's where Groove Agent will zoom. So if I select near the sample start, then I can zoom in, make sure that my sample start is exactly how I want it to be. And I can zoom back out again. And now that I've set my sample end, put it in loop mode and by default the loop end will jump to the sample end and so now when I play this pad it's going to give me exactly the effect I want it's just going to loop around the first half of this larger loop and if you want to get really fancy you can bring in a tiny little bit of crossfade just to take away any sample click sounding pretty good. Now the next thing that I want to do is sync it to my host tempo. If we have a look at the original loop in Media Bay, we can see that its native tempo is 170 BPM. And so there's various ways that we can make this sample fit inside our song structure. First things first, if I just move this out of the way temporarily, I've created a two bar part which is just a single note trigger in this sample. So because we don't have the BPM uh, aligned at the moment, we won't fit perfectly into that structure. So that's two bars worth of sample played, but we haven't reached the end of bar two. Now our song is at 160, so we need to make the loop warp to the song length. Turn audio warp on. Music mode is more CPU intensive, but superior. To solo mode. Just turn talk back off, that's annoying me. So if we set the original BPM to 170, we could also have done it in beats and that would give us the same result. So we've got our loop loaded in now. Finally, we get to start looking at the filter page. I picked Tube Drive because I uh, jumped over Classic. Classic doesn't have a distortion option. Tube Drive does. So th these are just different saturation levels. Be very careful when you pick bit reduction. It's absolutely brutal. But we'll start off with Tube Drive and let's get it running. <laughs> Thank you. 
bandpass, we're going to allow a specific set range of frequencies through. So in this in this case, we're focused on around about 400 hertz. And there's going to be basically a bell curve around which those frequencies will be let through and everything on opposite sides is going to get thrown away. So I've set the cutoff to 2K. And there we can see at 2K, there's our peak. And we increase resonance, we will sharpen that spike, but eventually it will start self-oscillating, so just be prepared. Distortion is going to saturate the entire signal. So if you have no distortion, you'll have a simpler curve, but obviously less harmonics. In high pass, when the knob's turned all the way up, you've basically thrown all of the sound away. And as we pull the knob back, we start to reintroduce low frequencies. So everything lower than 22K is what's in the audible range. And here you can see and hear the sound starting to come back to us. So if I turn the cutoff knob all the way down, we've let all the sound back through. So I've selected the band reject option here. Stop the loop just to explain what band reject is. It's very often called notch. Uh, and basically it cuts a V out of the frequency response. If you have no resonance, it's a shallow V. And as you increase resonance, the V gets narrower and deeper. So here is our shallow V, or as shallow as, as it gets for this particular sound. And you'll see that V basically start to disappear as it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. Now it's so narrow at this point and the, the sound itself is so rich, you're basically not hearing it anymore. AP stands for all pass. So an all pass filter lets all the frequencies through. It's not actually kind of strictly speaking a filter because it does let all the frequencies through, but it inverts the phase around the specified cutoff value. So at 638, it's going to flip the phase. And what you're going to end up with, with an all pass filter is you're going to get some uh, phase cancellation around the point. So you're going to see a dip in the, in the curve but um, all pass has different um, frequency response to the uh, band reject filters. And if we increase the resonance, you'll see uh, spikes appear on either side of the dip. So there's our, there's our cutaway. I'm just about to uh, demo bit reduction for you. But before I ever press this button, I always make sure my volumes are right because uh, at certain frequencies, particularly with the distortion knob, you can get some like absolutely hideous sounds. Tread with caution. Okay, so all of that is basic filter settings. Now let's have a look at tying some of that stuff 
to our envelope. So I've just got us back to a regular tube drive, low pass 24, 24 decibels per octave attenuation around the cutoff value. So here we have a cutoff value of 4905, which means at somewhere in the region of 10K, you've thrown away 24 decibels of sound and at 20K, another 24 decibels and so on and so on. So it's the curve, it's the rate at which um, frequencies are thrown away. Let's start drawing some stuff with our filter. So if we introduce this envelope, how is this going to interact with the loop that we're playing? Let's find out. So we're, we're not even getting to halfway through the envelope before the loop's finished its full iteration. Well, I want this envelope to do this to the sound every time one of those two bar loops um, completes. We can do that by syncing the envelope to the host. And now we know we've got eight beats to play with before the loop's finished. So if we fit this envelope inside those constraints, then we're all gonna be good. So as the loop gets to its end point, its sustain point, the, the, the sample has finished playing in the background and it does its thing. Let's say we want all the exciting stuff to happen in the first bar and the second bar just be a, a gradual slope up to the sustain point. No problem, we can do that. Pull this anchor, anchor point back to the fourth, the end of the fourth beat. Bring our sustain out to eight. Let's see what that sounds like. And every one of these filters is going to have a potentially dramatic effect on what the envelope sounds like. Let's pick another one, Let's see what this sounds like. saturation options. These, these three at the bottom basically, hard clip up to rate reduction, are all kind of nasty things. They do nasty things to your sound. Just hours and hours of fun to be had messing around with this stuff and getting lost, particularly playing with loops. You know, it's really cool to get into filtering when you've got more expansive uh, room to play with. So that's filter end works dealt with. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, please subscribe, hit notifications, uh, and you'll be sure not to miss the next episode. Hope to see you there. Thanks a lot.